Well, Steve, uh, thank, you, thank you very much for having us here at the BMW plant uh, in uh, Spartanburg, uh, South Carolina. And um, you, so you're celebrating 20 years of, uh, That's since right. you came here. And uh, this plant not only is producing cars for the rest of the world, it actually has a huge impact in this region, right? It has a very big impact in the region. Um, it's thinking back about 20 years ago, I did not work here at the time, but I worked in the media locally. And when this plant was announced and, and they had the official groundbreaking, the community of Greer and the area, Spartanburg County, people stood in the streets with signs welcoming the, the people as they drove their BMWs, the dealers came through. Um, it was a great, grand time. And so the community since 1990 two when the announcement yeah. happened in 94 has grown. Because I understand the economy was really bad back then uh, in this area, right? They had lost a lot of industry. That that, is that's true. This area, upstate South Carolina, uh, was a textile region and so it was a big textile areas in the 40s, 50s, 60s and it come in the 80s when um, some of the textile manufacturing went overseas to other places. There were some difficult times and when BMW announced, here comes a high-tech manufacturer, um, it was, it was pe people were very excited to hear about this. And BMW, one of the reasons they chose this area was because they had a very strong manufacturing base of people here to choose from. Yeah, but not automotive back then. Not automotive. There was yeah. not, no, no one here that I know of had ever made yeah. a car. <laughs> Maybe level. worked not, on them. Not at this level, at least. Right? That's right. <laughs> Maybe worked on them, but yeah. not made them. So a lot of history in this uh, plant. What uh, cars have been built here since uh, then? Well, the first car was a 318, 318i, built back in 90, 1994. Then the Z3 Roadster started in uh, the fall of 1995. That was became famous in, I believe, the Golden Eye James Bond movie. Yeah. And then in uh, 1999, the first generation X5 uh, came. Uh, 2002, the Z4 uh, started production. And then uh, we've, we've sort of we've built the second generation X5 in 2007, the uh, X6, the first generation X6, 2008. Um, I'm getting my head here, let's see. Yeah, because there, a lot of there's things been going a lot on, of yeah. models. So the X3, we yeah. built a brand new assembly hall. So the X3 came in 2010, the X4 in 2014. Um, the next, the third generation X5 was 2013. Um, and now here we are, the second generation X6, X6. here in the fall of uh, 2014. And you're doing a little addition to the to the plan to build something else. The X4, we are. Right? We, well, the X4 we we is building now. We're producing oh, it's already, the X4. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So in oh yeah, uh, you're right. It came out already. Yeah. That's right. And in March of 2014, we announced another one billion dollar investment here in this plant, adding 800 jobs. Uh, will increase our capacity uh, so that we can produce up to 450,000 units per year, making us the largest BMW plant by volume in the, the whole group and worldwide. That's amazing. But the exciting thing for a lot of people was, yes, we will build a brand new BMW X7 here, a three-row um, sports activity vehicle. That's amazing. We just did a small tour of the plant because the plant is huge. I yes. mean, you can, we just walk it like 30 minutes maybe. And so a lot of people working, a lot of women working. I mean, can you tell us about the people who work here? How many people do? What the shifts and what? They are uh, over 8,000 people work at our plant. Um, the shifts vary, but for the most part, they're, they're, we have what we call a shift model. So different teams work different shifts. But typically, there are 10-hour shifts, two shifts per day, so a, a basically a day shift and a night shift. The body shop works that schedule, so they're working six days a week, Monday through Saturday. The, the assembly hall also works two 10-hour shifts, six days a week. Paint shop works 12-hour um, shifts, so they have a different shift model, yeah. and they work um, six and a half days a week. So. Uh, the plant is just about running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, so 8,000 people, and then we have like, uh, I don't know how many robots, but they seem to be a lot too. There are 1,400 robots in the body shop, and then another in our two paint shops that we have, about 200 or more robots in paint. 
And assembly is the least robotic because this is where you know the, the customer is really seeing the car come together, so our associates are the customer's eyes. So as they're assembling the car, they're making sure the quality of the car is meeting the customer. Yeah, I was going to ask that. There's still a lot of uh, human intervention in the production of a modern car, like all the BMW models. Uh, and that's one of the reasons? That is definitely one of the reasons. Certainly we want to have a robot to do something um, for instance, in the body shop, you're working with sharp pieces of metal, you're yeah. welding it together, so you want a robot to do that. Um, it ensures accuracy and, and uh, every single time the same fit, uh, the, the, um, uh, the same fit in, in all of the components, but then when you get into a, the assembly area, you're putting in the seats, in the center console, the instrument panel, you want to make sure that it, it looks right, that there aren't any uh, quality yeah. issues with with those uh, and from the moment cars. that it's going into the car. So that's Correct. when you can probably if there's something wrong, which I doubt. I mean, the, the quality control is amazing. So if there's it something is. wrong at that point, they can stop it and, and start like picking right. It. They can they can uh, if there is something wrong at that point, they can uh, identify that and then make a note of it so that it is fixed before it ever reaches the customer. Yeah. So this is an assembly plant. So it means that a lot of components come from all the other parts, uh, maybe from here the region and and some of the parts of the that's, world? That's true. We have in uh, South Carolina, we have 40 suppliers. And then throughout North America, so Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. total, we have 170 suppliers. Yeah. And uh, the engines come from, uh, from engines, Europe, I believe, right? They do. Uh, Steyr, Austria, Munich, and then Hams Hall in yeah. England. So the logistics to put that together, I mean, because it's like a beautiful dance, seeing like the robots, the people walking, the, the actual, the supermarket cars that are automated, everything is just like to the minute, to, not to the minute, to the second, right? Well, everything here is uh, done in what we call just-in-time delivery, just-in-sequence. The just-in-time part, you don't see what's going on behind the scenes, yeah. but it's uh, most of our, our uh, value-add components from suppliers come in only about three hours before they're actually installed. So there's the no car. storage. Correct. There's very little storage here now for for uh, you know screws and different things. There definitely there's storage, but for the seats, axles, uh, those type of parts, uh, they come about three hours beforehand, and then they're put on the car. They're actually delivered in uh, the assembly north where the X3 X4 is assembled. They're delivered right beside the line where they're installed. So since the opening of the plant here, I think the whole area has developed, I mean the BMW presence here has developed, and now this is also a delivery center? People can buy their cars and come and pick it up here? Well, directly across from the plant is our BMW Performance Center, and it's in combination a delivery center. You, you customers can request to take delivery of any BMW. Uh, whether it's okay. made in Munich or here in the U.S., oh, they, will ship it here. Okay. they can ship it here and they can take delivery of their vehicle here at the Performance Center. But also the Performance Center is very well known for getting to experience the BMW products. So whether it's a customer or a business that wants to come here for team building exercises, yep. you can drive M5s, you can drive X models through an off-roads course, you can drive motorcycles in a great off-roads course. Uh, there's plenty of fun for whoever comes here. There's also a very instructive teen driving course to teach teen safety and driving, how to handle a car. Uh, you know, of course, the no texting and driving yeah. uh, motto, and and also it's very good, good impressive. Yeah, facility. we just experienced uh, a little bit of the X6 on the here in the performance center, and it was really fantastic. I mean, like all the exercises are really, really <coughs> very good to to. To, to feel what the car can do, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fantastic, so thank you for that. So is there a website or something that pe people can like get information about the plan, maybe tours, because you, you also do public tours? We, or do, we do public tours, we have uh, five tours per day right now in our X3, X4 assembly hall, but we're looking in the future, perhaps in the next year or so, to expand those into both assembly halls. So you would go to www.bmwusfactory.com and then on there, there'll be links to the Performance Center, there would be links to factory tours and what you need to do for that. And then, of course, there's plenty of videos and photos and information about our plan as well. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve. And uh, again, um, we'll uh, hope to, um, we're going to keep enjoying the car here and hope to come back here soon for uh, maybe the X7 when that Good. starts. We look forward to having it. Thank Thanks. you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.